Hey everyone, the Gaming Rev here. With this video, I'm going to show you the latest version of my PvP Magicka Templar for the Ascending Tide patch and the upcoming High Isle chapter. As per usual, this build is very cheap to put together and it relies on item sets that you can be sure will not be nerfed into the ground in coming patches. Additionally, this build does not rely on mythic items, making it even more accessible. The previous version of this build is still incredibly strong. I'll leave you a link to it in this video description. However, I sometimes felt I needed a bit more damage and sustain, particularly in 1vx situations. With this build, I managed to achieve both, so it's entirely up to you which one you prefer to use. Since the introduction of damage hybridization with this patch, many builds make use of both magic and stamina skills. However, I still find the Magicka skill set of Templars uh, to be far superior than their Stamina counterparts, apart from very few exceptions. This is why this build still focuses exclusively on Magicka skills and damage. Additionally, Templars inherently favour spell damage over weapon damage due to their access to minor sorcery. Once again, this build video goes quite in depth. That's kind of my style so make sure to watch it to the very end to get a proper appreciation uh, of it so come on let's go for it Let's begin with the race. If you're familiar with my channel, you will know that my favorite race by far is High Elf as it synergizes really well with Magicka Templars. With regards to spell recharge, um, not only it helps with your stamina sustain, which is a must in PvP, but it also reduces your damage by 5% whenever you use a skill with a channel or cast time, which applies to both your spammable and execute. Not only that, this passive is unique, so it stacks with the passive Spear Wall, which grants you minor protection for 6 seconds whenever you use Puncturing Sweeps. This means that when you're on the offensive, you always have access to a total of 10% damage mitigation. Sirabane Boon gives you 2k Max Magicka, and Elemental Talent increases your spell damage by 258. Good alternatives to High Elves are Dark Elf, Khajiit and Breton. I actually have a guide on best starting races that you should check out. The link to it should appear in the top right corner of the screen now. I also highly recommend being a stage 3 vampire as its skills and passives too synergize really well with Magicka Templar. Elusive Mist, for example, um, is super important for the repositioning and for just gliding through immense damage, especially when breaking into a keep. Strike from Shadows grants you 300 spell damage for 6 seconds whenever you come out of mist form. And on death reduces your damage taken by a massive 30%, something that stacks really well with one of the sets that I am using. With regards to my Mundus, I go with the Atronach for better sustain, as going for Apprentice would cripple your sustain a bit too much. Now let's take a look at my buff stats, and for this I turn to a screenshot as it makes it much easier, as a lot of my stats depend on a few procs. You can be sure that the screenshot I use for my stats sheets are never from trial target dummies. What you see is what you realistically and reliably get. So we get just over 34k max magicka, 30k max health, which I feel in PvP is a minimum, especially if you're not uh, running a class that has access to shields. And almost 20k stamina, which again, I think is great for blocking, dodge, rolling and so on in PvP. I've got 1,372 flat magicka recovery, but when you consider channel focus and elemental drain, that number effectively bumps up to 2,200, without considering any other means of sustain like reduced mag magicka cost glyphs. So sustain is excellent on this build. I also get 669 stamina recovery, which is sufficient thanks to the spell recharge passive. 
spell damage is 6659 so almost uh, 6700 but with continuous attack it will go up to almost 7.5k the reason why i have decided to invest more on spell damage rather than penetration is because not only templars get more out of spell damage than penetration thanks to mana sorcery but also because it was very important to reach the 6k spell damage threshold to make the most of proc sets which we're going to look at later and to push the damage of purifying light which now scales with spell damage flat spell penetration is only 3.5k but to that number you need to add almost 6k extra penetration from elemental drain which brings it up to almost 10k if you wanted more penetration you could run a 2h mole although you'd lose a significant amount of spell damage Spell crit is at 32%, which is excellent on a tanky build like uh, this one. Crit resist is almost 2k. My flat resistances are around 31 and 33k. Uh, However, while in combat, they reach 40k despite us using only three heavy pieces. To this number, you should also consider the 10% damage mitigation that you get on your front bar as well as the 30% mitigation of mist form so this build is incredibly tanky while enjoying a lot of damage and sustainability let's take a look at my consumables um, with regards to my food I just use any tristat uh, food you could also use the uh, free crown ones that, that you get uh, with daily rewards and uh, with regards to portions I use Alliance Spell Draft for Major Sorcery and Major Prophecy and that allows me to free up a slot. I also use Essence of Detection uh, that provide Spell Detection as well as Major Sorcery uh, for when you come against uh, those pesky night blades and also Essence of Invisibility for when you have to make a quick getaway especially if you're carrying loads of stones in Imperial City. Let's take a look now at my gear and this is where things get quite interesting and we start off with Scathing Mage. On my front bar I run this set with a Nernhund Lightning Staff. Scathing Mage is an amazing set that grants one line of Max Magicka, two lines of crit chance and a 20% proc that grants 500 spell damage on direct damage for 5 seconds. 20% proc chance may sound very low to some of you but on a Templar is very easy to maintain because each strike of puncturing sweeps is direct damage. Not only that, puncturing sweeps can hit multiple targets increasing your chances to proc this set further. Your light attacks and the passive damage of burning light are also direct damage. This means that this proc is up 100% of the time while in combat for as long as you keep the pressure up. Not only that, the spell damage bonus can be transferred to your back bar, increasing the potency of your breath of life. I went for an Nernhorn Lightning Staff for a few reasons. First of all, because the Nernhorn trait grants me more spell damage, and because Lightning Staves also uh, give us range damage, and coupled with off balance, they return a lot more resources for better sustain. I also went this time for a monster set rather than a mythic item, namely Magma Incarnate. I love this set for a few reasons. For starters, it grants me better magic and stamina sustain. Secondly, it grants me minor courage and resolve whenever I heal myself, which is basically all the time. This set can be, in fact, propped by the passive healing of puncturing sweeps, living dark and channeled focus. So you don't have to worry about that not only that you can give the buff to other players in your group so yeah this is just an amazing set on my body i run on this iteration uh, as well pariah um, not only it grants you flat max health and armor but it increases your physical and spell resistance by almost 10k based on your missing health this means that the lower your health drops, the tankier you get. This is super effective on Magicka Templars as we normally need to switch to our back bar when under pressure to spam Breath of Life. 
This set enables me to stay on the offensive and survive relying mostly on the stack self heals of puncturing sweeps, total dark, extended ritual and channeled focus. Not only that, I observed that when my health drops to 20%, most players would lower their guard thinking I am within easy execute. This opens them up to an unexpected combo that often proves lethal to them. If you have never tried this set before, I highly recommend it to you. It's a Rothgar Overland set that is dead easy to drop and reasonably cheap to buy on vendors. And then for the first time ever, I run Vateshran staff on my back bar. Now this is why I was very keen on building into spell damage because proc sets such as this one deal the most damage past the 6.6k spell or weapon damage threshold. Not only that, since the latest patches, proc sets crit again. The reason why I love this proc so much is not only because it grants free damage, but uh, a pressure that f will fill up the copied damage of Purifying Light even faster for quicker and harder combos. Not only that, Purifying Light now scales off with your spell damage, so the amount of damage copied will be even greater. In fact, on tooltip, as you can see here, um, it uh, stacks up more than 22k damage, which is in incredibly high and really, really bursty in PvP. On this setup, I use three heavy pieces, three light and one medium with four impenetrable and three reinforced traits. With regards to my jewellery, I have two arcane and one healthy so that I can reach 30k health with three spell damage glyphs. For BGs, however, I would either use Engine Guardian instead of Magma Incarnate or reduce Prismatic Cost glyphs on my jewellery, possibly my preferred option. Now let's take a look at my skills. On my front bar, we start off with Living Dark. I love this skill, especially on this setup and especially when I am playing solo. Not only does it slow enemies down, enabling me to land my sweeps better, but it also heals me when I take damage. This skill, together with the self heals from my sweeps, extended ritual and channeled focus, enables me to survive comfortably without having to retreat to my back bar. Not only that, it really helps me to survive when my health is low and Pariah kicks in. Enemies think that they have me on my back foot when in reality they're only opening themselves up to my damage. By the time they realize that their execute somehow is not killing me, it's too late for them. So definitely run Living Dark when solo and possibly Radiant Oppression when in a group as this skill has been buffed even further in previous patches. Then I have uh, Inner Light uh, for extra Magicka and Major Prophecy, although I already get that through Portions. This is a flex spot for sure and you can swap it for another utility or damage skill. It's entirely up to you. I then uh, run Toppling Charge. Not only it is a great gap closer and hard stun, but it sets enemies off balance. This means that if you're running low on Magicka for whatever reason, you can simply set your enemy off balance with this skill and then heavy attack them to recover even more resources. Alternatively, you can use Binding Javelin. It's a stamina skill, however, it provides a ranged hard stun that is unblockable and that goes through 100% of the enemy's resistances. However, I just cannot play without a gap closer, so it's entirely up to you what you prefer. I obviously run Puncturing Sweeps. It's AoE direct damage that procs my Scathing Mage. It further slows the enemy down while healing you for 40% of your damage. Not only that, uh, being a challenged ability, it activates the High Elf passive spell recharge and the Templar passive spear wall for a combined 10% damage mitigation on your front bar when you are on the offensive, which is absolutely insane. And then uh, I run good old Purifying Light, which now scales with spell damage, and on tooltip, its copied damage hits for over 25, 22k. Sorry. 
like I already said, <clears throat> this is another reason why I have decided to invest more in spell damage this patch, as this skill now provides great burst damage, which we often otherwise lack. <clears throat> Furthermore, it is also essential to prop the passive's prism and illuminate to activate minor sorcery and extra ultimate generation. And then last but certainly not least on my front bar, I run Crescent Sweep as my ultimate. It's super cheap, it hits really hard, and it's AoE. I basically use it as a finisher, and when combined with Purifying Light, it can really bust people down. Um, you could also alternatively use um, Dawn Breaker. Uh, it's uh, physical damage, although again with the hybridization of skills, it scales up with your highest stats, so that's not a problem. But it's clunky, it's way more expensive, it's easily dodgeable, whereas Crescent Sweep, even if somebody rolls out away from you and you don't hit them, the uh, dot damage is actually uh, pumping out from your character, so you would still be hitting them. So yeah, I find it a far better alternative than Dawnbreaker. <clears throat> On my back bar, we have got good old Elusive Mist. Uh, from day one playing as a Templar, I have been a vampire mostly because of this skill. It's amazing for repositioning and for escape. I love it especially to break into a keep as there is often so much damage localized on the entry choke point. I pop this one, penetrate enemy lines and then distract them away from the rest of the group, giving them an opportunity to charge in. It is such a fantastic skill for Mag Plus. The skill's only drawback is that you can't be healed by others and all your recoveries are suppressed. However, because of channel focus, which restores to you 240 magicka every second independently from your magicka recovery, you can stay in this form for a very, very long time, almost unlimitedly. On top of that, it grants you 300 spell damage every time you come out of mist form, if you are a stage 2 vampire or higher. Then I obviously run Honor the Dead, your burst heal for yourself and others. It also gives you back 18% of its cost every 2 seconds for 6 seconds if the target was below 75% health. Now that's an extra 700 magical recovery for 6 seconds, which is often not mentioned or uh, not acknowledged. I also run Extended Ritual for obvious reasons, a great AoE heal over time, uh, plus it cleanses up to five negative effects from you and others when they activate the synergy. And it also grants them a bit of a burst heal when they do activate the synergy. And uh, yeah, this is such a fundamental skill um, for PvP. If you're a um, Templar and you're not using Extended Ritual, you're playing the class wrong. Then I use Elemental Drain, which gives me back magicka and applies Major Breach to the enemy, but also because it procs my Vatashran Ice Star for that free damage. And I've got Channeled Focus as well for Major Resolve and magicka Returns and a nice healing over time. Now for a more defensive ultimate, I still go with Swarming Scion. It instantly heals you back to full health it boosts your stats by 10k each, it heals you for 16% of all the damage that you do, even if you're in mist form, I should say, and does AoE damage. Not only that, since Pariah increases your resistances based on your missing health, you reach resistance cap even more easily. You pop this and you suddenly become unkillable. Let's take a look now, finally, at my champion points and we're gonna start with the green tree there I use treasure hunter rational liquid efficiency and steeds blessing in my blue tree I run master at arms biting aura unassailable and untamed aggression the reason why I prefer unassailable to duelists rebuff is because most of the hardest hitting damage in Cyrodiil is AoE Think about it, fire ballistas, oils, 
Night Blade Bombers, the infamous Dark Convergence set, Dawn Breakers, Meteors, Leaps, and, and so on. So it just makes sense to slot this one instead of Duelist's Rebuff. Anyway, this is also how I've arranged my passives. And you can see it from here on screen now. I would say just, just, just take as many passives as you can. With regards to my red tree, I run Celerity and Sustained by Suffering alongside Fortified and Boundless Vitality. Since Rejuvenation only grants 90 Magicka Stamina healthy and Health Recovery, I feel it's much better to run Sustained by Suffering as it grants you almost double the resources when under a negative effect, which while in combat is basically all the time, even though you purge yourself of, of some of those damages. But it's up to you if you want to run Rejuvenation in its stead. Alternatively, you can run both by dropping Celerity, but I love Celerity so much since Magicka Templar's weakness is their lack of mobility. Celerity grants 10% movement speed at all times, making it easier for you to land all your jabs on a retreating enemy, and it also really helps with repositioning as it makes your missed for move even faster. So there you have it, my Magicka Templar PvP build for the Waking Flame patch. If you have enjoyed the build, please make sure to leave a like and a subscribe. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Unfortunately, I've been unable to include gameplay clips for this build as something went horribly wrong with my Xbox hard drive and I lost all of my recordings. Hashtag facepalm, you know. Um, but anyway, I've also started playing Elden Ring to escape the infinite frustration of ESO's broken performance. So feel free to check those clips out. Um, that would be much appreciated. Again, thank you all for watching and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.